Hey everybody, welcome. My name is Todd Ronan from Reality Forecast and at Reality Forecast on YouTube, and I'm joined with uh, hopefully Louis the Fourteenth and Liz Cross. Liz, how are you this morning? Um, great. Just this hair. <laughs> I think he reincarnated as an '80s rocker with that hair. It's stylish, yeah. I don't know if those are curls or a wig, but Louis the Fourteenth had some interesting. Uh, interesting background but we're gonna see if we can work with him to try and find out a long-standing mystery well he just answered that question that was his actual hair wow <laughs> that's Welcome. what he was known for was that hair he was also very brutal he's telling me anyway what would you like to know how's he doing uh he rather he's he, he loved his life as Louis the Fourteenth. He said most lifetimes that came after that were pretty lackluster. How did he choose to incarnate as a king? Um, he wanted to see what it was like and have that experience. Uh, most of his lifetimes are pauper-ish, uh, very poor, very much a servant. Um, but this was a, a chance that he was given, were, have you ever reincarnated as a king or royalty again? No, no, he hasn't. But he who, is in the military a lot. Who do you have to bribe on the other side to be a king here? <laughs> That's a good question. Who did you have to bribe on the other side? So you put your name down on a list, basically, and you have to prove that you're worthy of carrying out the sole contracts uh, with the people. How many people are involved in that decision? Um, well, I don't know if we can call them people. How many consciousness or entities are involved in that decision? How many consciousness or entities? Five. What are their titles? So they're sort of the masters of contracts almost is what he's telling me. I wouldn't say that that's their official name, but almost like a board. I've seen the board people before, the board souls before. Uh, there's about 12 or 14 of them that I have interacted with when I've gone up there shouting at them because they made me bad. But um, this soul contract board, it's a very important uh, job in the spirit world. And there's five of them and they pick who these top, top people are going to be like Putin and presidents and kings and queens and very influential people. What about the tech industry uh, as a whole? Those people are very influential. Are they on that list? No, they're not on that list. That, I, I, that was interesting to me. What was his death or his passing like? He was very ill. Uh, he had he, he had uh, some sort of disease anyway, and he just was very, he was very much out of it. His consciousness was leaving his body. And was he surprised by his death? No. It says he had gangrene here. Oh, well, that makes sense because he showed me as he looked quite off color and I was thinking it was liver failure. You know, that funny color right. you go when, but um, he said, no, it was like a disease. And yeah, that, that's, he, that's interesting. When he crossed over, did he make a facsimile of the palace of Versailles or like, what is the afterlife like for him as a king? He was stripped down to nothing which is what we all go through when we leave. We have nothing, uh, all, you, all recognition that is here on the earth plane. It means nothing when you get into the spirit world. All of those titles are irrelevant. Did people come to say, oh, it's the king? I mean, the people he killed, I guess he killed a lot of people. Were they 
rejoicing on the other side or is that not what it's like when you die no it's very much like because they were there before he was it's very much like well he had a soul contract with us this was part of it we fulfilled the obligation now he's coming because he his all of his soul contract obligations have been fulfilled now that is very interesting to me because is that the point of death not necessarily i was like is the point of death where all the soul contracts have expired and have been fulfilled but he's saying no because a lot and this makes sense too because when people pass they're still living out these soul contracts because the people that are left here on the earth plane have to go through the grief and the loss of missing them. So that's still part of a soul contract, right? The, the love and loss of losing someone, or even if you hate someone and they leave and, and that's part of the soul contract as well. The joy that somebody may feel when a terrible person has gone to the other side. I want to ask him about this guy. There was someone who he imprisoned called the man in the iron mask. Can he tell us who and who that was and why he did it? Uh, who was that? Was that, why did you imprison them? They're a traitor. They were the biggest traitor. Why and not I'm kill him? No, he didn't have the heart to kill them. He wanted them to come clean and wanted them to, to divulge the, the amount of traitor, you know, the, the amount of secrets, because they also had secrets from the other side, secrets from the enemy. So they, he, it was beneficial to keep them alive. Was it a velvet mask or was it an iron mask? Was it a velvet mask? No, it was it was iron. What was the goal behind making him wear a mask? Why not just imprison him? What was the goal in making him wear a mask? Because they should be ashamed of themselves. They, it brought about shame. Did anybody else have to wear iron masks? Yeah, that was something in the time as well that really shameful prisoners would have to wear an iron mask. Like they lost all identity. Did you have a twin brother? Did you have a twin brother? Did, did you have a twin brother? Yes. Was that the man in the iron mask? Was that the man in the iron mask? Yes. What? How was he a traitor? What did he do? And why would you do that to your own brother? That That's so cool, isn't it? Um, why was he a traitor? Because he gave away, or at least, okay, let me give it to you two ways. Um, first of all, he gave away secrets to the enemy of the military movements. And a lot of people got killed, but that was earth plane thinking. Now that you're in the spirit world, was that true? No, that absolutely was not true. He was set up by the enemy, set up by somebody that it was his brother that was giving away. He believed them and he feels ashamed of himself. This is something that always goes on between he and his brother this rivalry what <laughs> what was his brother's name and what did his brother feel towards him what was your brother's name it's something french it's something like jean luc or i don't know uh. and his brother how did you, well, you know, let me pull his brother in. Um, they're still fierce enemies. Okay. Cause that, they're not even standing together here. I've got one on one side of my room and the other one on the other side of my room. And wow. they hate one another. 
and his brother, but they, they always reincarnate together. And he always, who betrays? They betray each other all the time. This is something that they play out. Now, I think they're standing apart for effect. So we understand the nature of their relationship. But I'm saying to both of them, wait a minute. Most of the time, soul contracts are, we love each other so much that we, we make this contract to bring these life lessons. And that is correct. So the fact that they're standing apart is just for the audience entertainment, right, factor. Uh, they they actually do love each other very much, but they wanted to show that this is something that they play out all the time. So you were, uh, this is a movie? It was a movie with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. And that was their claim that it was actually his twin brother. Were they twins or were they just a, and was that the issue that he was worried his, his kingship might be usurped by his brother? Yes. Were you identical? They were identical twins, which is why he also had to wear the mask. Wow. Did he have the same hair? Uh, similar, very similar. How did you keep all that hair in the mask? It was cut. What did he feel? What's his brother feel like? What did he just accept his life or why didn't he protest about this treatment, this inhumane treatment, how is it hidden? Um, he couldn't. He couldn't protest against the king. Nobody's going to listen because if they do and they placate the prisoner, you know, it's off with their head. How old was his brother when he was masked and shepherded away? Um, in the tw- in his twenties. And how does he feel towards his brother about what treatment he got in that lifetime? He said, I got him back in the next lifetime. <laughs> what did they do this in is, the next lifetime? Yeah. <laughs> this is something they play out, right? Um, again and again and again. And in the next lifetime. You know, it's sort of like, are you, where do you reincarnate now? Are you in the U.S.? Yeah, they reincarnate in the U.S. now. And just from going through like the CTT, when you're doing past life regression, you can see where you can usually trace where the family, the line, the lineage has come from. So at some point, they've they've ended up over in the U.S. And they it's usually like good cop bad cop do their incarnations or their consciousnesses as royalty still exist and do they continue to have an experience in the afterlife as we're talking to them now no they only you know it's only because we ask them to revisit that consciousness right other than that they have a separate soul identity do they have an oversoul and is that who we're talking to right now yes the oversoul does exist and is that who we're talking to right now no we're talking to them right now and what percentage of their soul is this consciousness that we're talking to now A hundred percent. How can they animate another being? Is that a new soul or is that just a new consciousness as their incarnations here in America? I'm sorry. What? I don't understand the question. Their incarnations that they're having in America now. Is that a new soul that comes here or is that just a new consciousness that comes here that's now brought about? That's a good question. Is it a new soul? No, it's the same soul, but a con- a new consciousness that is shaped by cultural structures. And it's like a blank slate almost. So you're, 
old consciousness memories are locked within your soul, then you have the subconscious, which is where our new experiences go and they get, you know, laid down intrinsically within us. And then you have the conscious mind, which is the brain, which absorbs, you know, whatever it is that we need to, to survive. The more I go into the CTT, the more I understand that the brain's role is really to wire us for survival in this, in this present lifetime or whichever present lifetime we are actually in. That's why we need the brain and it's structured in that way. Obviously, the more we unlock the brain, the more it aligns with the soul or hopefully should align with the soul. I think a lot of times it takes a lot of work to align mind, body, and soul. Often we're going in very separate directions. Um, but the more you unlock the power of the brain, the more access you have to a knowing in the soul. Can we bring in the consciousness of Louis the Fourteenth, who is incarnated today, to talk to the consciousness of Louis the Fourteenth as he was then. The consciousness of so Louis the Fourteenth today, and I don't feel like they're on the earth plane yet. I feel like they're in spirit. What lessons can he share with the public about his reign and about that relationship with his masked brother? Well, it was a very bloody and brutal reign. He was not a kind person. Uh, he suffered with mental illness, extremely paranoid. Uh, and he shouldn't have been king. Actually, the brother should have been king because he was a much kinder, nicer version of Louis the Fourteenth. Was his brother born first? Where it was your brother born? No, he was born first. Did his brother ever ever have ill intent towards Louis the Fourteenth? Did your brother ever? Did you ever have ill intent? No, 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 but there was always this sibling rivalry. What message can his brother share? <clears throat> excuse me, what message can his brother share with the populace that's listening now about love of family and how we should all react in our lives, I guess? Well, love is the, you know, one of the optimum emotions and that if you can find a way to love, but a lot of times are, you know, we have all these other structured emotions that are going on within us, you know, jealousy, rivalry, competitiveness, a lack of understanding, um, you know, that those often stand in the way of pure love. And it also is supposed to. If your soul contract with your siblings is, is detrimental, then, you know, you have to basically elevate your consciousness above that soul contract. Wow. Liz, thank you so much. Louis the 14th, thank you so much. We'll see everybody next time. Yeah, this, th this is great. I love this. Thank you.